South Jamaica, baby, they made me to be the greatest. Serving the deed of my creators, fresh off of my high haters. It's the king again, Magdalene, Sophie bragging and boasting. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy Dollars. Welcome back to the channel. It's another day, another dollar video, and I'm going to be reacting to a new video from Hip Hop Daily. It's called Pressa from Kidnapper to Drake's Tour Opener. This looks like it's going to be an interesting video. I wonder what Hip Hop Daily has to say about this. Hopefully, it'll be some new information that I didn't know. But, um, you know, it seems like all these YouTubers be covering the same topics, regurgitating the same information. So, you know, it's nice when somebody gives us something that we didn't know. All right. These guys be doing some kind of background check. They probably got some type of connections with the feds or something because how the hell they be getting all this information? How do they know? All right. I'll be thinking these guys are the feds on the low. But uh, yeah, let's hop in this joint. Let's check it out, man. You already know. Toronto's rap scene is on the rise. One of their biggest rappers is a dude named Pressa who got a wild story, including opening for Drake's tour while out on bail for kidnapping charges. Let's tap into the come up and career of Pressa, Toronto's babyface badass. Pressa was born and raised in a driftwood neighborhood of Jane and Finch, a hood in Toronto known for crime and gang activity. His mom's Filipino and his dad's Jamaican. But at just five weeks old, his pops was sentenced to 15 years to life for second degree murder after shooting a security guard. So he and his brother were raised by a single mom. And while she was working, trying to provide, Pressa and his brother quickly got sucked into the streets. Why his dad shot a security guard though? What did the security guard do to him? I'll bring that back. I gotta listen to that one more time. They're shooting a security guard. So he and his brother were raised by a single mom. And while she was working, trying to provide, Pressa and his brother quickly got sucked into the streets. His brother Shamar started selling crack as a teenager and ran again. Damn, he got your whole government, bun dog. You did a good job hiding your face. You know what I'm saying? Only to have this guy blast your government name to the world. Shamar. <laughs> Yo, Shamar, what up? Now, let me stop. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably public knowledge either way, right? When these guys get arrested, you know, the cops have all that documents and data for anybody to look up if they want to. So, And it was that Project Marvel shit. So I already know they definitely have public information about everybody involved in that. Gang called the Young Bucks Killers. The gang would get caught up in a police takedown called Project Marvel and got linked to many different crimes, including shootings and drug trafficking. The police determined Shamar was the leader of the gang and Presto was being trained to be the next in line. So cops raided their home and found multiple guns, cash, and drugs like coke and ecstasy. Mm. Presto pled guilty to selling drugs from his mom's house and got hit with 14 months in juvie. While he was locked up, he had his brother sneaking weed for him to smoke. The officers eventually searched his cell and found the weed and charged him with organized crime with the intent to sell marijuana. Damn, your man Presser loves smoking, bro. Like every interview, well, not interview, but most of the time, every time I see him, he's either rolling up or he's smoking, man. He needed that shit even when he was locked up. But getting that is kind of easy to get that in jail. It's not hard, you know. You could get anything in jail, bro. Jail's like the streets, man. You're just behind bars and you can't get no pussy, you know. Marijuana. They ended up dropping the organized crime charge, but he was still tied in with Project Marvel, which would follow him for a long time. Mm. Ten months after he got out, Pressa went on the run for an attempted murder charge. He ended Damn. up getting caught and arrested after 14 months on the run and spent like nine months in jail. See, now that's something I didn't know. Your man's had an attempt murder on him? That's crazy. And from this video, it seems like Pressa has a crazy extensive criminal record. So how the... F how was he able to go into the United States and a lot of other guys can't with the same similar criminal history? Y'all let me know. But he eventually beat the case and all charges got dropped. Oh, he beat While the he was case. dealing with his there own legal go. situation, his father got released from prison on parole. But he was only out for like 10 months before getting into an altercation that violated his parole and got him sent mm. right back. Presto was in jail at the time, so he never got to reunite with his dad on the outside. But he said his pops always picked up his calls from jail because he knew what it was like being on the inside. His dad so was a real one. He had someone he could rely on to talk about what he was going through. His brother Shamar eventually got convicted on multiple gun, drug, and gang charges and was given a 10 year sentence. So, with his brother sitting down and no one else to look after him, Preston started making music as a way to escape the streets. That's crazy. Bundog did 10, bro. He did a whole decade in there, man. He was locked up for the whole 2000s. Well, not 2000s, probably what? 2012 when was it that project marvel shit when that go down 
He dropped his first song, Wasp Gang, in 2015 with Robin Banks, another Driftwood rapper. The song was a tribute to their friend Wasi, who recently got shot to death by police outside of a nightclub. Wasi was one of Press's day ones, and they came up together in the streets. When he died, he was on the run for a double murder. While he was out partying, the police caught up to him, and it led to a shootout. Wasi fired at them first from inside a car, so police responded by spraying bullets, and one hit him in the chest. Damn. Wasi was well known in the neighborhood, and his death was a major loss. Seeing his close friend get killed had a major impact on Pressa, and he decided to make a change and do something more positive to avoid ending up in the same situation. Wasp Gang went viral and became a big hit in the area. Robin Banks already had a growing fan base in Toronto, while Pressa was only known around the neighborhood. This was his first introduction as a rapper, but it showed he had talent from day one. He started dropping music more consistently in 2016, but his street activities eventually caught up to him and almost destroyed his whole career. In April 2016, members of the Young Buck Killers threw a party at an Airbnb in downtown Toronto. Members from the Queens Drive Crips, who were known to beef with the Young Bucks, tried to crash the party. The two gangs ended up getting into it in the hallway, and like 10 shots was fired. Damn. The whole thing got captured on CCTV, which shows two Young Bucks members ducking into an elevator while being shot at from the hallway. Damn. No one got hit, but the shootout was enough to set off the Young Bucks Killers who wanted revenge for getting their party crashed. <laughs> Yo, son fell to the ground like he thought he was hit. You feel me? He just like anticipated it and he just fell down like he was already hit. Damn, now nah, that's crazy though. In a freaking hallway and nobody gets hit, bro. God was on all y'all sides right there. That, that was, yo, in life you get a freebie, all right? What I mean is basically you always get one fuck up that God probably let slide, right? You know what I'm saying? And from there you got to learn your lesson. But if you don't learn your lesson, that's on you. That must have been their one freebie right there. Like, ah, right, you know what? I'm going to let you knuckleheads survive this shit with no injuries. But if you guys continue on this path that you're on, it's over. Like, you learn, you know? Like, if something bad happens again to you, that's on you. You should have took that that first warning and made a change with your life with that one, bro. Because, damn. In that small ass hallway, nobody gets hit. Shit. It's a miracle. And shot at from the hallway. No one got hit, but the shootout was enough to set off the Young Bucks killers who wanted revenge for getting their party crashed and almost getting killed. So they came up with a wild plan. They decided to target the two 17-year-old Crips who gave up the party location to the rest of the gang. They somehow convinced them to meet at their spot where they kidnapped and tortured them. They was held hostage for like 48 hours and forced to do some real sick shit. Ah, uh, so that's what happened. The kidnapping and tortured. Ugh. That's crazy. I'm, I, I was wondering if he's going to actually like say what happens and he touched on it a little bit. They got tied to a chair and beaten up pretty bad. They was also forced to play Russian roulette with a loaded gun. At one point, they even got forced to perform sexual acts on each other. Wow. And these was two teenage boys. If that ain't bad enough, they also Hiya. filmed doing it just to embarrass them. The torture got so intense, it got the neighbor's attention and they had to move them to a different spot to avoid getting caught. Then they contacted the victim's families and demanded a ransom. They eventually let the two boys go after one of their moms paid $3,000 up front and agreed to pay another $7,000 within a week for a total Damn. ransom of $10,000. The kidnappers also told her if she ain't come up with that extra $7,000, they was going to put out the videos that showed them performing sexual acts on each other. So the victims was released and taken to the hospital. At first, they said they would talk to the police, but later changed their minds, probably afraid of what could happen if they was also labeled snitches. But it ain't matter, because police found enough evidence to start making arrests. Mm. The most famous name caught up in the case was none other than Pressa, who was arrested on charges of kidnapping for ransom, unauthorized possession of a firearm, and assault with a weapon. Even though police say he was one of the primary instigators of the violence, his lawyer argued that he only played a small role in the kidnapping. They don't think he's the one who actually planned it. Damn. That's a good ass lawyer you got, bro. He made that shit go away like nothing. But bro, I'd rather die, man. Like ain't no way, my nigga. You're gonna have to kill me. Cause I'm not I don't give a fuck, bro. Torture, whatnot, bro. Just just kill me, man. You know, like <laughs> That's just crazy, bro. I'd rather die like a man than to fucking do some sick ass shit like that, bro. His lawyer argued that he only played a small role in the kidnapping. They don't think he's the one who actually planned it, but it's not clear exactly what party played in the crime. The courts must have believed his lawyers because they allowed Presser to be released on bail to await trial. By this time, his music career was already heating up, and he took this as an opportunity to try to change his life for good to avoid going down the same path as his dad and brother. 
He dropped multiple singles, which all racked up millions of views, including the 100 Wasi bars and Lavish. He also dropped his debut mixtape, Press Machine, in 2017. Then, he teamed up with super producer Murder Beats for the song Novocaine, which became his breakout hit and gained him more fans outside of Toronto. The song started to attract the attention of major artists, including Drake, and Presto was invited to open for the Six Gods Boy Meets World Tour in 2017. Drake had posted a video of himself singing along a Novocaine. While in you know what's crazy, bro? 2017 seems like it's so long ago, but if you think about it, it's not even that long, bro. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and we're in 21. I mean, it's five years practically, but, you know, it, 2017 feels like it was just yesterday, bro. And that's crazy how time is flying. Like, look how fast this year went. We are already at the end of October, bro. 2021 just really literally, like, went by so quick. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing because I don't want to, like, rush through life i want to appreciate every single day that i have you know and i'm saying it's like we're rushing to get old and you know and, and things if you look at what's going on in the world bro it's like it's getting worse and worse you know so what do we have to look forward to i don't mean to be negative but it just feels like we're just heading to freaking disaster every year is something new bro you know last year with the whole pandemic and now What's, what's next, bro? That's basically wh what life is. Like, okay, what's going to happen next? You know, but um, the ones that are really awake, not these fake woke motherfuckers, we know what, what times we're living in. And, you know, I tell everybody, please get right with the man upstairs, man. Because, you know, time is shorter than what you think, man. And it, it'll creep up on you just like this year's cre just like this year creeped up on us too. All right? In the UK. He and Presta ended up linking up in Europe when Drizzy was on tour. This co-sign helped Presta's career, and after that, he started collabing with major names in the industry like Tory Lanez and British rapper Giggs. But Drake also faced a lot of backlash for bringing Presta on tour while he was out on bail for being involved in a brutal kidnapping. Even though Presta got permission from the court to go on tour with Drake, the Toronto Police wasn't happy about it and called several venues to shut down the shows. But Presta ain't let this stop his grind, and he continued to make the most of the opportunity he was given. He seemed focused on putting the gang life behind him and making a change for the better, even if his past continued to haunt him. The courts must have noticed him trying to change because in December 2017, he was cleared of all charges related to the kidnapping after being out on bail for about 18 months. Mm. The only evidence prosecutors had to link Preston to the crime was one of the victims saying he was pistol whipped by someone who looked like the guy who rapped under the name Pressa on YouTube. The judge ain't think this was sufficient evidence to positively ID Pressa as the gunman, so he beat all charges. But two other members of the Young Bucks killers, who were supposedly the real ringleaders of the kidnapping, got convicted and sentenced to six and nine years. After beating the case, Presta stayed true to his promise to leave the streets alone and move to LA where he could focus on music. He dropped his debut album, Prestige, in 2019, which debuted at number one on the iTunes Canada hip hop charts. In 2020, he signed a deal with Sony Music Canada and dropped an EP called Gardner Express. In 2021, it was announced that Pressa was in a relationship with another up-and-coming artist, Coy Ray, who's the daughter of Benzino, the former CEO of the source. Aren't, aren't they broken up, man? I just seen something yesterday that said that they broke up. She posted something on Twitter and then she deleted it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's sad that that was a short-lived uh, relationship. But hey, you know, usually artists like that just starting out and, you know, they're both young and they still got, you know, a lot to do in their career. It doesn't work, bro. Y'all just having fun for the moment, man. That's what it really be. But, you know, they look good together, bro. I, I was rooting for them, man. Real talk. Force Magazine. Even though Pressa still uses street themes in his music and talks about the life he grew up in, it seems like he put the past behind him and is on the bigger and better things. Hopefully, he can stick to them. I mean, I don't know about that when you're dissing dead ops and your music now. How are you going to try to say you're leaving the streets alone, but then you're still dissing dead ops, which is like reigniting shit. You feel me? So, yeah, I, I don't know about that one. Music and not fall back into the lifestyle that almost ended his career. All right, man, that's the reaction. I mean, it was a decent video. It wasn't too much info. I mean, the only thing that really was interesting to me was the, the stuff about his father and, um, you know, the attempted murder case. I didn't know he had that. But um, it looks like when advertising, it looks like um, 
I don't know if he paid this YouTuber to make this video because it's like, why would you make this video out of the blue? It just seems weird. It's like some promotional shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I think this was like a promotional promotional thing. He probably got in contact with homie and told him, yo, make this video. I got the album coming out. You got to look at it like that, bro. Everything that happens, bro, everything is controlled, is designed. It's like nothing happens by accident, man. So even the little smallest th detail, there's something behind it that was planned, you know? So that's how you got to look at things now, especially in the industry, bro. Nothing happens by accident. And um, yeah, just stay woke, guys, you know? Don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything you hear. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. Drop a like if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. And you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter. Mahala at y'all. I'm out. For my time goes by, they gon' raise a nigga jersey in the sky. Treat a nigga right, big dreaming all my life. Shorty wanna get some air, I go and get up when I fly. Taking off on these niggas, I retire. The minute I catch fire, I smoked them all before, just revisiting the high.